Our next witness is witness 245, page 326 of your bundle. Good afternoon, Mr. Witness. Can you hear my voice? Yes, I do. Yes, yes. Mr. Witness, would you repeat after me, please? I, solemn, I solemnly declare that I will speak the truth. I um, solemnly declare to tell the truth. Nothing but the truth. Uh, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Okay. There'll be questions from council now, followed by questions from the panel. Thank you. The, the, the witness voice is uh, spoken by a member of the council team. The witness has witnessed shooting by security forces, killing a teenager by shooting at his head. Witness 245, can you please inform the tribunal of what you witnessed on 16th and 17th of November? Ben. Uh, yes, uh, greetings to all of you. Uh, 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 regarding, I, I'm going to start my statements with 25th and 26th of Auburn, 1398. It was the 25th of Auburn that I had to leave the house because I had something important to take care of. And when I left the house, I uh, saw uh, that something was going on on the streets. There were crowds. Uh, it was a personal thing that I had to take care of. Uh, and uh, I saw that the streets were completely blocked, completely blocked. When I say uh, blocked, uh, I mean that, that there were cars that had stopped, uh, the, all the drivers had turned off uh, the car uh, and left them. And I could not even find a vehicle uh, to go and take care of my personal um, matter. I uh, found a motorcycle. Uh, never mind that. I went and I did what I needed to do, and I came back. On the way back, I had to walk back because I couldn't find a vehicle again um, to use. When I uh, walked uh, back, Back on the way, I saw uh, that a lot of things are going on. Um, the, uh, there's a big crowd, and I went uh, and I uh, joined the, the protesters. And really, these were uh, protesting uh, um, peacefully, very simply. They were saying, why has the price of gas uh, gone up? Uh, why is it uh, increased? And what I saw there was uh, the special unit uh, present there at that hour. The, a special uh, unit was there along with the motorcycles and the vehicles. And uh, uh, um, uh, at that time, we saw that was an ATM uh, machine um, the, the, there, um, the, a bank, that, to, let's say a bank that serves the passengers uh, at an ATM. And all of a sudden, a smoke came out of it. And uh, there was uh, over there, exactly there, the special unit. And we said, nothing has happened. Please call. Call firefighters uh, so that they come and they put off the fire. I uh, swear by God, uh, that person said we have no permission um, to call them. I said, what do you mean? You cannot call them and tell them to come. If you call, they will come here more quickly. He said, no, we have no permission to do that. And I realized then that their intent was to start violence. Anyway, um, uh, this, uh, the, the, the machine uh, um, uh, burned, uh, it turned to smoke, and there were those who were also filming it. And uh, uh, 
uh, when the, the special unit saw uh, that uh, the situation was aggravating, uh, they uh, started going into their vehicles and their motorcycles and they went away. Um, the, the people started, the protesters started chanting slogans, death to the dictator. And I uh, chanted the slogan, um, death to Khomeini. He is the um, um, root of all this. And somebody told me, don't make it political. Don't make it political. And I answered and I said, well, how do you mean I shouldn't make it political? All the misery that we have in this country is because of Khomeini. Uh, the, the, the small child to an old man, they will all know that. But there was somebody who was telling me, don't make it political. Don't make it political. And I was answering and saying the root of the problem is the system, is the regime. The root of the problem of the increase in the price of gas is the regime. They can even give an order and reverse it. Uh, so people, the protesters, were just giving slogans and saying reverse the decision of the uh, re re increase in the price of uh, the gas. When this was announced, everybody was shocked. And the whole night, myself, personally, Personally, I was trembling, and I said, uh, how am I going to manage uh, if a liter of gas is 3,000 tumors? Perhaps for you, uh, it's not understandable. But in Iran, uh, the situation and the situation of the income is in such a way that if pr a price increases threefold, um, especially if that's gas, then every other item is going to increase tenfold. It's a um, ripple effect. Uh, and uh, uh, anyway, uh, we were moving, and we were moving towards uh, the special uh, unit, and we were s s throwing stones. That's the truth of the matter. We were throwing stones. They uh, got on their uh, motorcycles, and they rode away, and we followed them. And we were almost, uh, yeah, I can say, 100 people. We were throwing stones and we were chanting slogans. And uh, they threw uh, two or three times tear gases uh, in our direction. And uh, one of them came towards me, and I, my eyes were burning, my nose, my throat uh, were burning. And uh, over there, uh, who were uh, more professional, uh, they would uh, put a piece of newspaper or paper uh, on fire and would say, "Keep that in front of your face to prevent the burning of the uh, of the of, of the eyes." And it, it happened uh, more than once or twice. And uh, I started feeling uh, sick, and it was difficult for me to stay there any longer. I couldn't breathe. It became very difficult for me. So uh, this was the. Experience extent of the struggle uh, with the, the um, special unit that day. But all of a sudden, we saw that from behind us on the street that we were, there were 10 or 20 motorcycles, two on each motorcycle, approached us, uh, and they were uh, clad in khaki uh, clothing. And we realized that they were the besieged, the militia uh, from our city. And they, they all had their uh, walkie-talkie in their hands. Uh, um, the, these are the mobiles that they uh, um, uh, use, that they can um, uh, um, take uh, uh, videos and films. And they had tripods um, underneath them. And they were taking films, and they were telling us, disperse, disperse. And then at that time, uh, the crowd had become very angry. They would disperse a little bit. Uh, they would gather again together. Uh, they would gather together once again. They would pick up stones. They would throw them. They would chant uh, slogans. And I uh, observed that they were saying death to Khamenei. Um, uh, they were uh, chanting slogans, death. Uh, uh, to the dictator, and they said, uh, uh, Reza Shah, um, rest in peace. And this continued un until 8.30 in the evening, uh, and we blocked all the streets. Uh, um, uh, we also set fire to tires and things so that um, uh, cars could not pass anymore. We were protesting. We were protesting because of the increase in the price of gas. and. Uh, and then uh, we came to 8.30 in the evening, and uh, the protesters became very tired. So gradually, they dispersed, and they went back home. Then, uh, oh, sorry, I forgot to tell you something. The, during the first uh, day, uh, that's to say the 25th of Auburn, 
uh, we had the progress to uh, the, 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 such an extent that they threw um, tear gases on us, and also they were shooting uh, bullets uh, that when they um, hit a wall, uh, f- uh, for example, that somebody wanted to take shelter behind, they would make a hole. And I think that these were plastic uh, bullets uh, inside which they had pellets. Because I picked up one of them, I looked at it, and I saw that it looked like a bullet, but it's plastic. And I realized that from inside it, pellets would come out and would uh, hit people. And even during the first day, there were three people uh, who were hit. Uh, There was one person who was hit near the eye, uh, like like, uh, an inch or so. Um, Somebody had been hit above the ear, that's to say in the head, uh, above the ear he had been hit and it was bleeding. And uh, there was uh, uh, another person, as I continue, I will tell you who this person was. And uh, uh, we took this person uh, to a school, and uh, there was uh, somebody there, I opened the door, said, uh, come, come in, come in, and um, clean the blood. Uh, anyway, uh, those two went in, and they, um, uh, they, 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 they cleaned the blood, and they went away. Uh, we knew that they were injured, and uh, we also went away, and we continued with our demonstrations and our protests. And then we came uh, near the base. And when I talk about the base, this is not the Basij uh, base. Uh, this is a base which is a very dangerous place, and I don't want to say what it is here. I don't want to name it. Uh, I hope you get my meaning. Um, I, I don't want to uh, say it, but I have written it before. Um, when we threw stones uh, towards this place uh, and we chanted the slogans, um, uh, all of a sudden we saw uh, that from uh, inside the, this base, I'm not going to name it, but we saw saw that from inside they uh, shot somebody below the knee. And we saw this person who fell down. Uh, We lifted this person. There was nobody to help us, um, for example, to come and assist us, uh, like an ambulance or a a doctor or somebody. Um, I mean, somebody just to help us uh, and to help the wounded person. There was nobody. And as God is my witness, Uh, The only people that we saw were around 100 uh, motorcyclists, uh, young people uh, who had their lives in their hands. And once we saw that an ambulance came that we thought uh, uh, supposedly, uh, so to speak, uh, to help us, uh, and it didn't because when you see an ambulance, you naturally would think that uh, the ambulance has come to help the wounded. And then we saw that the ambulance uh, uh, took this person and took took it to the uh, police station. And then we realized that if they take the wounded people, the ambulance is not going to go to the hospital. It's going to go to the police station. And afterwards, we also saw and we also heard that the wounded people would not reach the hospital. They would be taken to the police uh, force. And therefore, we realized that rather than helping the wounded people, they arrest them. So. Uh, and uh, we were going towards them, and they would retreat. Uh, but uh, uh, it would happen that all of a sudden, that 20 or 30 people who were armed to their teeth would attack us. And uh, uh, they were shooting bullets, whether it was a bullet or it was a pellet bullet. Anybody who would be hit and could not escape, I swear by God, they would drag this person. They would uh, kick the wounded person uh, with their boots. Um, They would hit the legs, the knees, uh, and they would drag the person, take the person, and take the person to the police station. These are things that I saw with my own eyes. These are things that happen. And uh, I uh, saw this person, and I saw that person who was arrested. It was 18th of November, the following day, when the situation became really dire. 
in a very brutal manner. The officers acted as if somebody had ordered that they should wrap up the protest. I even heard that such a thing was said. I heard that the great criminal, the greatest criminal, the leader of the Islamic Revolution, Ali Khamenei, had ordered that, and he had gathered the heads of the three branches of power, that they should, as quick as possible, wrap up the protests. And those three were in charge, responsible to do so. And they were responsible for the crisis. I heard that from somewhere credible that the that the leader that the supreme that their supreme leader who may God curse had uh, said so to the heads of the three branches that they should wrap up the protest as quickly as possible otherwise Mr. Rohani Mr. this and that people will say I will tell people that you have been the cause of all the crisis. I don't want to say how things went on in that meeting or whatever. But anyway, on the second day when we went out, we wore clothes. My children were accompanying me, and they said that we should uh, protest. We went out. I didn't really know what was going to happen, because when I went out, I felt that they were shooting in the air. I don't know whether you would understand or not, but I heard a uh, something pass by my ear as if a bullet passed by my ear, close to my ear. I could hear the sound of it. I felt that I thought that they were shooting in the air. One of my acquaintance said that they are shooting directly at us. Let's go under, uh, uh, under the bridge, under, uh, and, and we realized that they are directly shooting at people. And uh, even I could uh, see uh, the empty cartridges uh, on the uh, ground. God is the witness that I saw it, and some other person was gathering them. I don't know what, what for. I saw that individual who had taken these empty cartridges. He had uh, some mental problem. He was a poor individual. It seems that he liked them, so he was gathering them for himself. Another uh, horrific uh, object that I saw there, I had explained before what it was. Uh, there were 30 to 32 year old guy. Why 30 to 32? Most people were under 20, some 17, 18. They were all young. There was a 12-meter object that they turned into a shield in front of these young people. Oh, sorry, these young people turned that 12-meter object into a shield because they thought if they used that shield, they would not be hit by the tear gas. So a number of people went behind that object, and they were throwing objects at the offices from behind that object. As they were throwing objects, and we were not that far. Assume it was across the road, a main road, of course. Maybe at most 20 meters distance was between us and the forces. When the people were throwing stones, and they uh, attacked a little bit. They were throwing stones at the officers, police officers. 
They were trying to force them inside so that they won't shoot at people. And they did not do so. And a very bad thing happened. And I saw with my own eyes that the young people were being shot. What had we done wrong? They shot people with a like they were being shot with a machine gun. Who would do so against someone who doesn't have anything in their hands, just is throwing stones? And then you talk about Palestinians. We were just throwing stones. You're even worse than those who suppress the Palestinians. You fire at people. Uh, when that object that was used as a shield fell off, we saw that one individual, the people had fallen on the ground. One has been hit on his side at the waist. Another person, something had come off his head. I didn't even dare look. I think it was his brain that had came out. And there was nobody to help us. Just assume, just think an 18, 20 year old guy, this should happen to him. He didn't even have a handkerchief to cover his wound. We didn't have anything. The only thing that we could do, one of the individual's brain was out. He had died in place, but the other one at least was breathing. We put them behind a motorbike. We were putting the corpse, the bodies behind the motorbike. See what's going on there, here. One was riding the motorbike, taking another person whose brain had just fallen out. So one person was in the front, one person was sitting behind, holding the corpse in the middle. And the second person was similar. I don't know where they took him. I just know that they took him out of the scene to save him. When I say that I saw such scenes, I was quite frightened. I just chanted some slogans from the bottom of my heart. I said, I chanted slogans against the dictator, and I said, death to you, death to, death to Khamenei, death to you. And whatever power I had, with whatever power I had, I shouted, and then I couldn't stand there any longer. I truly couldn't stand there any longer. Then I went home. The clashes were really severe, and the clashes just continued. There were more injured and bloody people. They were attacking us, and we, couldn't, we could see from distance they went to the alleys, and our house was very close to the place. I opened the door very quickly. I went inside, but I could hear people shout and cry out, women, children, women, children. They were crying and crying. They were being tortured and tormented. I couldn't, uh, my conscience didn't allow me to hide in my home. I wanted to go out. But I was thinking to myself that if I go out, I'll get co uh, killed as well. What did we do wrong? We just wanted to protest against the increase in the petrol prices. You could have had 10 people. Uh, you could have dispatched 10 people to come and negotiate with us. Why did you do so? Why did you do this to the young people? I'm sorry, I cannot control myself. And then I went home. And it was 7, 8 in the afternoon when I could hear the shots. And the sound of shooting didn't stop even for one instance. No, it didn't even stop for one instance. It did for one or two minutes, but then again it started. Until I contacted one of my friends and I said, what's going on? I want to come out. I cannot sit here and just listen to the 
sound of the bullets. I want to come out. He said, don't come out. The situation is really dire. If you come out, you'll get killed. Don't come out. And he had gone towards his home. It was 8.30 in the evening. Then things finished. I can I have provided uh, accurate explanation of everything. If you have any questions, I can respond. Maybe you have everything in writing, so I may stop here. Mr. Chairman, we, we have a video of the scenes, but the scenes are extremely graphic, and we, we would like to warn everybody here and the panel that this, there will be very tragic scenes and they may, may be very disappointing. Please show the video. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Witness. The tribunal may have questions for you. Is counsel in a position to indicate uh, how it came into possession of the video? The video reflects the, the scenes that the witness was uh, with, uh, has witnessed, but it's not provided by him. This has appeared in the oh, uh, in the public media. Is counsel able to, if not now, but um, give us more detail concerning how the uh, video came into your possession? Yes, that we will provide you with that. Thank you. Justice Yaku. Thank you very much. Um, you're 39 years old, is that about right? Yes. And uh, you don't consider yourself young? No. No. Do, I'm not young. Do you consider yourself what, middle-aged or getting old? As destroyed, I consider myself destroyed because I have, if you live in the Islamic Republic for 39, 40 years, then you are destroyed. In terms of your age, how do you feel about yourself? Do you feel that you still have, do you feel do you feel oldish or do you feel young? You know, some people feel differently about themselves. Man, I'm not 
since the incidents, I feel that I am destroyed. I feel that I have really become old. Sorry. And before the incident? Before the incident, two months before the incident, I used to work. And I relatively had a, a decent salary. I was working until this incident happened. What was your decent salary as a matter of interest, if you, if you don't mind telling us? I don't know this. Where I have written, you can see it. How can I say uh, what was my salary? Interested, not because I want to know what your salary is. Uh, I'm interested because I want to look at the price of petrol in relation to your salary so I can get some idea. That's all. Well, maybe not everyone was like me. Not everyone was like me. Not everyone had was able to pay for the petrol price like me. Not everyone are the same. Many people were simple laborers. It is true, I've written there that I was a simpler laborer myself, but I had a decent salary, but still increasing the petrol prices would have affected my life. I was doing a certain job but even in my own job, I had to pay double, triple prices for the items that I needed to buy. Certainly, I would have been adversely affected. When the prices of petrol increased, even though I had a decent salary, I was shocked. I could not even believe what was going on. When I read the caption, uh, on TV that they had increased the petrol prices by 200 percent. I was shocked. I couldn't believe this. Aren't people really living? Should How could they increase the prices so much? Well, there are some people who have high income. Well, that would not affect them, of course. You might live in a rich area in the city, and those who live in those rich areas wouldn't really bother. And they say, well, the price of petrol is really cheap, 3,000 two months. It should even be 20,000 two months. That's what the rich people say. That's not what we say. For us, 3,000 is a lot. It affects, it adversely affects our lives, and it would have adversely affected my life. I had uh, yeah. transport means, I had to use petrol, I had to use it for my uh, work, I had to now pay triple price, 3,000, uh, uh, it's very different uh, when it becomes uh, triple the price. Uh, it would affect the prices of everything else. I have uh, provided my written statement and I have explained about everything. I cannot say right now, but it would have affected everything because of security reasons. I cannot say all, explain all these details, but you can go and read it. Uh, I, all my life would have been affected by the increase in the prices of petrol. It would have been really difficult for me. I, if I explain now, I will be identified. Um, do you have any idea what uh, an average school teacher in Iran would earn today. And if you don't have any idea, just tell us. Ben 
It seems to me, I don't know what their salary is. I think they don't get much. Their salaries are really low. I don't exactly know how much they receive as a salary. I believe that uh, compared to what they do, they get very little. How much uh, 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 a worker, or let's put it, do you know how much a driver would earn, a truck driver on the average? I know how much a laborer earns, but I don't know what a truck driver would earn. I haven't driven a truck. I think uh, at the time, a laborer used to receive one and a half million. Maybe I have uh, even uh, um, overspoken. At the time when I was the working, it was one and a half million, two months. All right. Then, then the, the, you, you considered most of the protesters young. Did you see many people about your age in the protest grouping? No, not unfortunately. The protesters, age was low, and there were very few who were older age. And the older age demonstrators came closer to me. The ones who could not throw stones and uh, who could not do much just came to us. There were not many uh, old age. I didn't see many adults, high age adults. I didn't see many. Most were children, 18 uh, up to 20 year old children were there. There were very few individuals who were 35, 40, and above. I didn't see any elderly, or maybe very few I saw, at least in our city, in our town where I was. Maybe I paid attention to the officers. I didn't see. Maybe I didn't look properly. Anyway, I didn't see. Everybody was holding their children's hands. They were young. And they were taking young children, or they received calls. Even my father called me. My mother called me. Don't go out. Um, there is unrest. Go home. We are now uh, destroyed. Uh, I said that, uh, that, don't you see what is going on in the country? They told me, no, you've got a wife, you've got children, you're young, you should go home, leave it. And I said, no, I'm not going home. I'm going to stay, I'm going to protest. Everyone was like me. Yes, I know the others were also afraid, but not us. They, are, they were afraid to lose their children. How old are your children? Is it possible that I do not answer this question? I'm interested because you were very emotional when you talked about the injuries, and I was just wondering whether the young people that you saw injured were perhaps the ages of your children. That's the only reason I asked. Do you want to comment on that? Uh, 
I don't know whether I should answer this question. You see, I live in a region uh, where things are very dangerous. Right now that I am talking to you, I'm under great stress. Uh, um, whether they are going to identify me and come after me. Uh, so uh, uh, that's why I hesitate to answer. Could go after your children too. Would that be one of your fears? Yeah, okay. Uh, yes, yes, precisely, yes. No, I, I, I understand. I'm sorry about that. Now, I really do understand that after you saw all this violence, your, your, your objection to the authorities increased greatly. Is that right? Ben. Yes, uh, yes, uh, yes. What was your attitude to the authorities? Before you saw this violence, were you uh, interested more in the increase of the petrol price, or were you also interested in changing the dictatorial system in your country? Now, I can understand that now you are interested in changing the dictatorial system because of what you saw, but I'm really interested in what your position was like before you saw all this. Before uh, uh, the uh, events of the month of Auburn happened, we knew, and I personally knew, that uh, uh, this regime is not going to leave by itself is, uh, or is going to leave us alone. Um, uh, the, the, the clergy, the Ahons, I'm sorry to say it, but they are very dirty people. Um, uh, and uh, I knew uh, that that day when we are going for the protests, uh, uh, what we wanted to say is how do you allow yourselves uh, to increase the price of petrol threefold during one night? We just wanted to shout to cry out our grievances so that the world would hear us and to say why. Why have they done this? So what we received, what violence. They beat us up, etc. We just wanted to, uh, we were just uh, throwing stones. Um, uh, 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 the uh, leader of the Islamic Republic uh, could have just given an order and could have said, uh, just reverse the order. People are angry. They are disturbed. Uh, 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 just with one word, he could have made people go back into their homes and not come out. But uh, it is a dictatorial regime, and you're faced with it in every uh, sense of the word. And they want to uh, the, uh, the push through what they say, no matter, no matter at what uh, cost. And whatever they want, they do. They kill the young people. They arrest them. Uh, if uh, uh, right now... Uh, I want to change my religion. If I be want to become a Christian, it's not possible. There is no way. If you say you are a Christian, they will not let you anywhere. There is nowhere for you to worship. And anywhere that you go, they will beat you up and kick you up. Or kick you and throw you out. There is no freedom. What kind of a regime is this? We just wanted to have a space to protest and say, why have you increased the price? Although we knew that uh, this uh, system is not worthy of remaining in place so that we could guide it, we could direct it. We just wanted to uh, express our pr protests. Interpreter, before we finish, may I please ask you a question? You don't have to translate it. May I? Surely, please go ahead, yes. <laughs> you use the word regime, 
in answer to, in, in your translation. Now, in the English language, as I understand it, uh, there's a difference between a government and the regime. The regime is illegitimate, and the government is considered to be more legitimate. Is that the distinction that exists in Persian as well, to your knowledge, and what word did the witness actually use? Uh, we translate what the witness says. Answeretuna nemi fahmam. Dolat tu jomuriya sami dolat amu rejim et yaman manzuretuna nemi fahmam. Hamashun dasishun tuya kasas. Man nemi fahmam. You know, farat yeah. The witness does not allow me to tell him that you asked me the question. He is explaining. He says when we say government and the regime is the same. It's not Europe. Um, when uh, there is a difference between the government and the regime, it's all the same. Uh, you, you are uh, really thinking as a, a human being in a humane way, in a place which is uh, centered uh, on, on, on laws, on rules. Uh, here, where we live, it's not, it's not that. There is no difference. They're all the same, the military, the uh, other forces, the government and the regime. All of this we call the regime. And if you say you want to change something, it means that you have to change everything. Not that the government stays and uh, the IRGC has to uh, go. No, all of them. When we say the regime has to go, it means everything together, uh, whatever exists in the Islamic Republic has to go. Thank you. I was jumping to the wrong conclusion, so... I'm glad for your help. Thank you. I have no further questions. <clears throat> Mr. Witness, I just have one question yeah. for you. Um, you indicated that after this experience that you had, you were no longer able to work. Did I hear that correctly? Yeah. Is vale, vale. Yes, 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 yes. Is this because of the, the trauma or the, the feelings that you experienced um, by watching the, the incidents? Yeah, uh, uh, the, the, what you have to consider is this, uh, that uh, first of all, uh, there is not good work to do. Um, that, that, that's to say, uh, work the, for which you receive a good salary, that you can run the affairs of your family. And that's the second, that's the first thing. The trauma or, or uh, the damage that I have sustained, I sustained it then. Uh, that's to say, the work that I used to do before, I cannot do anymore. Uh, and uh, I just said, let, let, let's let go. Uh, I don't want to do it. Um, uh, that's to say uh, that would require me to go here and there and get entangled with them. And I said, no, it's not worth it. So I'm not going anywhere to look for, uh, for work. I just wait, wait it out to see what the situation will uh, turn. Uh, if things improve, uh, well, I am sure that lots of young people and I can take an oath on anything uh, that you consider sacred, um, I can swear that if the regime of the uh, Islamic Republic changes, 90% of the young people will go to look for work, to um, make their lives, uh, to make their future, and not to be uh, so disappointed and depressed uh, all the time. They're, they're all disappointed. I can see it. Either they are drug addicts or they are uh, having tranquilizers. Uh, uh, or th 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 there is nothing there. What consolation do you have uh, over here is a very strange world. I hope you understand me. How can I explain it better? I am ashamed of myself to have to cover my face and to come and talk here. And then I see the mother of Puya Bakhtiari or the uh, mothers of a thousand other people who come and courageously talk here. I am so ashamed of myself that I say, look at our courage. I don't have any. I, can, I cannot talk here with my face. I, I'm really ashamed of myself to appear before you uh, the way I am. And you can infer from this what kind of a government we have. 
uh, you have to read what we have written to understand what the situation is here and what we are enduring. Uh, I really, I really don't know how else to say it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, witness. Um, we re we very much appreciate your coming in whatever form to the uh, panel. So we're very grateful. Thank you. Good afternoon, witness. Um, first of all, I want to say that it does take courage. Um, so there is no shame in that. Um, it's a question I ask a lot of witnesses, so I hope you'll give me an answer as well. Given all that you've said um, about the regime, why is it that you appear today? What would you like to achieve? All we want is our freedom. Uh, and we, to get rid of this Islamic uh, uh, regime. We just don't want uh, the Islamic uh, regime. We want to have freedom of expression, uh, to be able to talk, to air our grievances. That's not the case here. If uh, somebody says something or wants to say something, before the, the darkness of night uh, arrives, they are going to come and arrest him. He is going to be captured. Uh, his family uh, is going to be arrested. Uh, they are going to be persecuted. Everybody around him is going to be harassed. Uh, and they are going to destroy you so that this uh, is not that is not going to be repeated anymore. We don't want this anymore. We want them to go away. I swear that if the United Nations sends some representatives and makes a referendum here, I promise you on my honor that 90 percent will say they don't want the Islamic Republic anymore. And that 1 percent that say they would want them to stay, though are those who are parts of the system themselves. They have good lives. They have their orchards. They ride the best because, of course, they don't want the regime to change, because if the regime changes, they all have to flee, and they will be accountable to the people for whatever that they have done to them. So I am sure of it. I don't want the regime. Not totally, I don't want it. My family doesn't want it. And I swear on my honor that there are lots and lots of people that are like me. And I swear on behalf of all the people of conscience that I have seen who are, uh, are with me, beside me, they don't want it. They don't want it. They don't want it. We have uh, some free elections. We want some free elections. Uh, we want that to be conducted in order to see uh, what the Islamic Republic has done uh, to uh, the uh, oppressed uh, and the wronged and the noble uh, people of Iran. Come and see what they have done for the past 40 years, uh, except for uh, um, uh, uh, for, for, for stealing from them and corruption. What else have they done for the people? Uh, neither do they help uh, the youth. Uh, they don't help them at all. Uh, the young people who uh, finish their studies, um, there is uh, no work for them to do. As soon as they finish, they say, I have to go elsewhere. I have to leave the city. There is nobody. You cannot tell them uh, you have a future unless you have some uh, very important person who can push you in favoritism. If you don't have that, you will not get anywhere. We don't want uh, uh, this, uh, this system. We don't want the regime of the Islamic Republic. And uh, if you want it uh, uh, to be proved to you, please send somebody from the United Nations and have a free referendum um, uh, to, see, uh, to see what's happening uh, here, um, uh, who is doing what. Uh, the, uh, I mean, the, the, those are the killers. They they confess it. Oh, to, even today, the the person says, "I killed such and such a person." What do you want to do to me? And uh, there was an MP uh, from uh, affiliated with the same regime. He says, uh, "I killed the person. I killed the protesters uh, in Auburn. What do you want to do?" 
and that that would prove to you what kind of people we are dealing with. Thank you for your testimony. Just short uh, question, Mr. Witness. Uh, you mentioned that you heard that the uh, order for shootings uh, come from the Supreme Leader uh, Khamenei. Uh, do you know or do you, uh, are you aware that other people also uh, know about the order? Bene. At least your friend or your colleague. No. Or there is the general knowledge that the shooting uh, came from the supreme leader. In a tiny show. Uh, it, it was general knowledge. Everybody knows it here. Everybody knows that everything is under the control of the leader. This is uh, public knowledge. If you come and ask even a child over here, the child will tell you that uh, the one who controls everything in the country is the leader. He's the one who issues the orders. He, he issued an order and he said, wrap it up. Wrap up this story. What does it mean to wrap up? How can you wrap up people? No further questions from the panel. Thank you, Council. Thank you. Thank you, witness, for your very courageous assistance to this tribunal. We appreciate your evidence. Mr. Witness, uh, thank you very much for uh, giving evidence to the tribunal. Uh, certainly no shame and lots of courage. Um, we will take everything you've said into account. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, in response. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, I forgot to tell you one thing. Yeah, I'm sorry, I forgot Uh, one of those people who was killed was somebody, as I heard, uh, that uh, the family, the brother, had been asked to um, pay 30 million tumans in order for them to deliver the body. And the brother was going to different people to be able to collect the money in order to, uh, 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 to, to get the body and to be able to have a memorial for him. He was not uh, somebody with big, great means. Um, he was not in a very good financial um, um, means. And I don't know how he was, from which sources he was going to collect this 30 million two months. Uh, but that's what they had asked him to pay. Uh, the Islamic uh, uh, government. Uh, I thought I should share it with you. Thank you very much, Mr. Witness. Council? Just, just to let the tribunal know that the video was published on Twitter and it's part of the collections that Justice for Iran had made of over a thousand videos.